Did you know that affirmations is actually a form of meditation and that you do it all the time? Hi, if you're new to me, my name is Raquel and I'm your GPS for success. Today, we're doing day eight of the series I'm calling Made for More. And in this series, I'm really helping you to connect with your identity and who you really are. Today's subject is around affirmations. And so far, we've explored disconnecting from external circumstances, the power of meditation, the role of your soul. I've given you guided meditation, self-hypnosis, and the power of journaling. And if you haven't seen any of those, be sure to check them out. What I did for you is I created a list. It's down below in the description. There's a link where you can go and it'll take you to a page. There's no opt-in and you'll see all the days on there. Um, You can go ahead and save the page because as these are being released, then that will be updated for you for ease of reference because I like ease of reference. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to have to go hunting and trying to figure out what order I should be watching these things in, or maybe there's just a certain subject I'm more interested in. So I've made that for you. Super easy below. There's also... um, an audit, an activate abundant audit that's also free for you that you can grab in the link below. So go ahead and grab those freebies um, while they're there. So I wanted to go ahead and start to really dive into affirmations because I've heard, and I'm a Jesus lover, and other Jesus lovers might think like, that's not biblical, you know, uh, I'm not doing affirmations, I'm decreeing, I'm declaring. And they have all these erroneous things around the concept of affirmations because they actually don't understand what it is. (laughs) But an affirmation is only a statement that you are repeating to yourself over and over again. Now, when we think about affirmations and how people normally use that word is that they connect it to a positive statement in order for them to, you know, um, help them with a challenge or overcome some negative thoughts. Or maybe they have some self-sabotaging behaviors. So that's how they really want to see affirmations. But the working definition that I'm going to be using here is really affirming. You're just affirming a statement over and over and over again. And that is going to either help you overcome um, or it's going to connect you to that thing over and over and over again because you are reinstating it by affirming what is versus starting to really create this new path for yourself. Now, the goal of an affirmation is really to reprogram your subconscious and to encourage you to believe in your potential and your abilities. And we're going to see how this really starts to unfold as I continue helping you with this. And for those of you who are Jesus lovers like me, you know, we're told in the best-selling book in the world, death and life are in the power of your tongue and you're going to eat the fruit of it. We are constantly eating the fruit of our words, constantly. In the book of James, it talks about how our tongue is a rotor, right? And this is why affirmations work and they work for everybody because that's how we're wired to succeed. It doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian, a Jesus lover, a Jesus appreciator, or, you know, maybe um, you've walked away from that and, but you love affirmations, but, and it works and it works not because it's mystical, not because it's magical, but that's because this is how you're wired to succeed. You are wired to succeed by eating your words. <laughs> Sometimes when people say, you're going to eat your words is usually a negative connotation, but we're already doing it. We do it all the time. It's the way we're designed. We are designed to create and go toward the thing that we are concentrating on or focusing on in our subconscious. And our subconscious gets the direction from the voice of the mind. So you are constantly meditating when you're doing affirmations, when you are affirming a statement. So where do I get that from? Again, in the best-selling book in the world, it tells us how to live a successful life. And in Joshua 1, eight, it says that, you know, to meditate day and night and you will find success. Now I'm cutting it up and I'm going to piece it back together so you can understand um, where this principle is coming from. Meditation is the key to success. And in that verse, it doesn't say that God will make you successful. It says you will find success. Why? Because in the word, and I talked about this previously, is the dynamic word haga. And one of the definitions is to mutter to yourself. (laughs) What's muttering? 
it's t- giving yourself a statement over and over and over again. So when you are doing affirmations, you are meditating according to that definition. And whether you're a verbal verbal processor muttering out of your mouth or, or maybe you're a mental one like I am, and so you're muttering in your head, you are now entering into the realm of meditation. And so as you are muttering to yourself, and we do this all the time, right? We are constantly <laughs> telling ourselves a story. Telling ourselves a story is muttering to yourself, is medit- is a form of meditation. And so we're told in this verse that we will find success. And then it tells us, well, you know, to find success, then think about God's word. And so God's word is filled with, you know, prosperity and health. And whenever God speaks to us, he speaks to us from the end, from the beginning. And I'll talk about this a little bit more. Let's see how affirmations is actually a very biblical concept. And we're told to meditate that if we want to be successful, then the key to be successful is to meditate. And then specifically saying the, you know, the word of God. Why? Because it's filled with power. It's filled with life. It's filled with prosperity. It's so powerful. And so this is the way we're designed. We're automatically doing it. And things that are pure and and perfect. We're told to think on those things, the things that are praiseworthy. Well, what is that? Those are positive statements. <laughs> so I, I have run into a lot of people who poo poo affirmations. So like, I don't do affirmations and it's not biblical, but it is. God is very specific. This is how we're wired to succeed. And if you want to be successful, then you want to meditate. And one form is to do affirmations because you're already doing it. And again, the book of James shows us that how powerful our tongue is, how powerful our words are, that we can turn things around by what we are saying. So why affirmations maybe haven't worked for you in the past? And really part of it, again, is this lack of understanding. Affirmations might not have worked for you in the past due to a lack of understanding that we have to embody the thoughts. And embodied thoughts is actually what creates the outcome. Thoughts don't become things. Thoughts internalized, materialize. So I say that you're just one, and that's it. Just one embodied thought away from whatever it is that you want. And that's it. It's not just about saying the words. It's about feeling and believing them. But then how can you say something that you don't feel and believe? So I'm going to help you with that here. Rewiring our brain can take time. It doesn't always because there are different ways you're, you're, you can rewire your subconscious, which is part of your internal AI system. Part of it is when you're rewiring, you can rewire through meditation which your brain loves meditation because when you first came in between the age of zero and seven, you were, your brain was in this data wave. It was in meditation. It was in record mode. And then after it, you know, you start learning by the second way loves to, to reprogram, which is repetition. The third way that you can reprogram quickly is through a high emotional event. But I found also that it doesn't have to be a high emotional event. It could just be like, oh, this revelation moment. And in an instant, your belief system changes. And you've, we've all have had those experiences where something becomes so clear that your belief system changes in a moment. And it maybe wasn't a high emotional event, but just like all, everything came together. It was a synchronous moment and everything shifted for you. But this is a way that you can start turning things around by using affirmations, by rewiring your brain. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that to really help you hold on to why you should be doing affirmations on purpose, because you've been doing it already by default. And now you can take your power back by doing it by design. Our current thoughts and beliefs have been reinforced over the years, but the good news is that even if they've been reinforced, you can turn that around in as little as 21 days, in as little as even a day, a moment, in as little as 60 or 90 days. The time is going to pass anyway. It's going to pass anyway. So you might as well start doing some things on purpose because it does take consistent effort to create those new neural pathways in your brain that will support the positive change because you're so used to and have mastered 
bad habits and thinking. And so if you start the new practice for yourself, you can even use this as a fast. People I know love fasting, but they don't understand really the benefits and why we should be fasting. And one of them is the most powerful fast that you can do is not abstaining from food. It's abstaining from stinking thinking. That is harder than doing a food fast. It is harder than doing any kind of fast that you can think of that has to do with abstaining about something specific. Try going on a stinking thinking fast for 21 days. It is going to be the hardest thing you've ever ever done and probably one of the best. I guarantee it. So what happens when you say, well, you know, how can I say something when I don't feel and believe it? I'm going to help you with that as well. But first I'm going to just help you with creating effective affirmations, which is why it hasn't worked for some people in the past. So sometimes it works and then they kind of hit a wall. One, you want to make sure that you're using present tense statements, right? So just, I am confident instead of, I will be confident. Well, I am, right? You're in present tense, but I will be. Now you're giving direction to your inner AI. I will be confident. And your inner AI says, okay, not today. <laughs> because you're saying, I will be. Well, that's in the future, right? That can be in five minutes. And that can be tomorrow. That could be next week. That could be next month. That could be next year. That could be in 10 years from now. There's no real direction with, I will be. And so it kind of think about like those horror movies, you know, when they're like the hallway just gets longer and longer and you're running, that is what's happening and why you haven't been able to maybe um, manifest that particular affirmation is because it was not constructed correctly. Then we have our positive language, right? Focus on what you want, not what not on what you don't want, right? You're not going to say, I'm, you're not going to say, I don't want to be sick. Of course you don't. <laughs> you would say, I am healthy and vibrant is the concept of calling things that be not as though they were. That, that is a concept that we find as a principle. You speak the end from the beginning because that gives your brain, right? The target. It's practicing the target practice of where you want to be by setting the the rudder, which is your mouth, which is your meditation, which are the words. We will never go any farther than how we see and feel about ourselves. And the story we believe about ourselves is the story that we're living out. So if you don't like your story, if you don't like your storyline, you can change it. Another reason it doesn't work is believability. So your affirmations should be believable to you. And if they feel too far-fetched, right, your feelings are coming in, they won't be effective. And so I'm going to help you with creating effective affirmations when you don't believe it. Because the only reason you don't believe it is because of the thoughts. We sometimes give too much. We make feelings our master. And our feelings, our emotions are just a byproduct of the thoughts that we have been thinking. And because we're thinking them over and over again, we have embodied them. That's it. So there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. The only reason you're feeling the way you're feeling about yourself is because of the thoughts that you have been telling yourself about yourself. And when you start changing that, you will start changing how you then feel about yourself. But it does take a little bit of time. It doesn't even have to take that much time. There are things that I've been showing here, the hypnosis, the EFTs, um, the scripting, all these other things help to shift you faster. And if you want more help with that, I actually just finished a series about manifestation. It's also 21 days. I will go ahead and post that link below as well. So you see all of them in order and all the videos are on YouTube. So another, you know, we love YouTube University. <laughs> so go ahead if you want want to learn more about that particular subject, then check out that particular series. So your latter thoughts are your incremental affirmations, right? They're going to help you bridge the gap between your current belief and your new belief that you're trying to adopt. And it's all a belief system. It's all a story that you believe. That's it. So why do they work? Latter thoughts work because they're more believable and they're achievable. They're making it easier for your mind and for your brain, right? Because your mind might, you might mentally ascend in the moment. Your heart might be like, yes, I want this. But then your subconscious has all this other information. And so your brain just wants evidence. Your brain is your partner. 
So give it what it needs so you can hit your target. And it'll be easier for your brain to accept this latter thought and then gradually build toward what you ultimately want in an affirmation. So you can create latter thoughts different, differently, right? You can start with your ultimate goal. Let's say it's I'm, I'm financially abundant. You know, I am rich. <laughs> and your brain's like, girl, no, you're not. Look at your bank account. <laughs> so you can find a more believable step, like creating this latter thought that feels more believable. Like I am learning to manage my finance, finances better, right? So which is easier to believe right now? I'm learning to manage my finances better, my finances better, or I am rich, right? If you're with a bunch of people who are like very excited in the moment, yes, you can believe, yeah, I am that, I am rich. But as soon as you leave that environment, if you do not have, create the support system in order for you to embody it, it will be released from you. So this is about creating the support system and you can do this by making the choice, by choosing the words that are going to be life for you because that's what you're choosing to eat. Another thing is remembering to progress gradually. You know, as you start to believe each step, you can move up the ladder and, and have some more ambitious affirmations. So let me give you some examples, All right? So maybe you're not gonna say I am rich or I'm wealthy, but you can say something like, I'm learning to manage my money wisely, right? That's true. That could be true. Or maybe you can't say I'm confident because you don't feel confident right now. But you maybe you could say something like, I'm becoming more confident each and every day, and today is no exception. How does then that feel? And this is where you want to check in with your feelings. Does it feel good? And then you're like, Oh yeah, I, I can I can believe, I can buy into that thought, I can buy into that idea. Maybe you can't say that I love my body, but you can say I'm learning to appreciate my body. And that's a really great place to start. So here are some practical tips for using affirmations and latter thoughts. It's just a consistency. Again, your brain loves it and it's biblical. And even if you don't believe that the Bible was written this particular thing is neuro, it is neuroscience. Neuroscience is now showing us this is how we're wired to succeed. Your thoughts, what you say about you. And so if you are, you're already doing it by default. So and you know that you're doing it now that I've explained it and exposed it. Repeating the affirmations daily, being consistent is going to rewire your brain, which is part of your in, inner AI system. That's why we need consistency. I talked about, um, I think it was also in this series, about 21 days. And we like the 21 day rule. It doesn't actually create a habit, but it does create momentum, right? And so we want the momentum because 21 days is really good. Don't do a lot of affirmations. Just pick like um, one area and you can do like different ones for that one area. But when you're first doing this, just pick one area. Don't worry about the other areas. The other areas will also start to change as you focus on that particular thought. And it's really about finding the thought. I talked about this yesterday in day seven. Finding the thought that's actually the hiccup. Because sometimes we don't know what the kingpin is. And this is where um, the exercise that I talked about in day seven is really helpful for that. So I encourage you to go and watch that. Um, that'll help you to discover it on your own. And if you need help with that, I meet with uh, my group twice a month live. And I also have 24 seven asynchronous coaching, which means you can send me a text. I can help you to discover what the thought is, right? Because it's just a story again, that we're telling ourselves. And we say that, oh, the truth sets, sets us free. That's not true. That's not what it says. It's knowing the truth that sets you free. And if you don't know which thought is the lie, then you're going to keep on believing the lie and thinking of something else. If it's the truth that sets you free, it's a lie that keeps you captive. And so there is a lie. There is a thought that is keeping you captive from what you want. And the exercise I talked about yesterday, and actually this whole series is going to help you to self-discover it. And if you want to move faster, then come and join us in the society. Everything you need to know is down below. Or if you want to work one-on-one, -on -one, there's an option for that as well. I do an accelerator for 21 days on a one-to-one -one basis. 
by remembering that consistency is the key. Anybody can do anything for 21 days. And the first few days, it might suck. And this is why I talked about like creating a system that's like the masculine energy structure. Saying, okay, what can I do to create the system so I'm successful in this? The first system is is your decision, is your the act of your will saying, this I am doing this no matter what. And the second thing um, I talked about it yesterday was the 1% model. And the 1% model is you are investing yourself 1% or less every single day. So what is, you know, it's 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes. Anybody has 15 minutes for 21 days. Maybe you say, well, I don't even have 15 minutes to myself, but you have five. You can start with five and build up to the 1%. I do things with my one-on-one clients that are only like five or seven minutes a day. And they're having amazing success and breakthroughs in their lives. Why? It's just consistency and systems. You build the systems to support you so that way you can do the thing. And so maybe you don't have 1% or you think, right? You think you don't have it and so you don't do it. <laughs> Your procrastination is not the issue. You don't have a procrastination issue. You don't have a self-sabotaging really issue either. It is only a thought that you're believing that is causing that. That's it. And then embodying, right? They say, feel the affirmation in your body as you say it. Imagine it as your reality. But if you've actually never experienced that, it's hard for you to imagine it. We're always going to buy into something that we've already experienced or we, we are already thinking about. So don't worry about your feelings. Your feelings and your emotions, they're only based on your thoughts anyway. So as you, and I'm like, I'm not a visual person. I, I can get very visual once you give me a structure. <laughs> That's why self-hypnosis works really great for me. Guided meditations, you know, those kinds of things because someone else is kicking off the imagination with and for me. But I'm not one of those that's um, hyper imaginative first on my own, super visual first. And so that's really good news for me and people who say they're ADD or ADHD or <laughs> hyper creative because you're like, your mind goes from one thing to the other. So this is a really great practice. I'm like, oh, wait, I don't have to do that. I don't have to be quiet in meditation. I don't have to just focus on one thing. I don't have to try to feel it. No, actually your, your feelings and your emotions are just data. It's just data. It's just letting you know um, how you are internalizing that thought. And once you really understand and grasp that, then you can take your power back, right? Because then your feelings will and your emotions will naturally come and they will naturally organically morph into a positive, healthy one as you are affirming the thoughts that are healthy for you. And this is how you integrate your information is by creating, and it's really good to create a daily routine. Routines are great. You call it a routine, a ritual, a habit, whichever word is going to really um, help you to grasp it, use that word. You can say them in a the mirror. You can write them down. We talked about that yesterday. And see, you can either use it during your meditation or do it as your meditation because you're already doing it anyway. So if you're ready to take your journey of self-discovery and personal growth to the next level, then I invite you to join us in the society. Again, it offers you 24-7 asynchronous coaching and live group meetings twice a month and like thousands of dollars of resources. So how do you join? You click, click the link in the description below to find out more. And I can't wait to see you there and support you on your journey. Remember that the journey to redefining your identity and achieving your goals, it can take time, but it doesn't need to. <laughs> it doesn't need to take a lot of time. It just needs a little bit of your focus. Be patient with yourself. Have grace for yourself and celebrate every step forward. We talked about that in day seven. And tomorrow, stay tuned for the next video because we're going to continue to explore powerful tools and techniques for your self-discovery and personal transformation. And if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share your thoughts and experiences with affirmations and this video in the comments below. I answer all the comments and I would love to engage with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. And remember that you're capable of incredible things. You are made for more. I believe in you. I'll see you on the next video. Bye now.